This is the Loop Deck Live, and it allows for some rather interesting uses in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. In short, it can act as an additional control panel with a variety of functions, including the touch sensitive buttons as well as individual usable dials, along with numerous customizable and programmable features. Of course, the Loop Deck is primarily built for content creation, live streaming, and productivity. But turns out it works extremely well with simulation focused gaming going even so far as to offer customizable icons. I'd like to thank Loop Deck for sponsoring this video, as well as sending over a unit for me to check out with the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Do check out the links in the video description for everything you need to know. The software comes with a ready made plugin for the sim, created by Cali BX. Once installed, this gives you a wide variety of functions that you can use directly in Sim. This includes separate menus such as Autopilot menu, a Lights menu, as well as ATC. Each of these different menus or folders contain a variety of individual functions. Before we get to the unboxing and the setup process though, let's take a look at the interesting aspects, the thing that you're all going to want to see. How does a loop deck perform inside Sim? Well, for those of you who want the short version, it actually performs really well and it's something I'll be using regularly from this point forwards. Although let's get to the longer version. You'll notice immediately that the Loop Deck is not recognized as an import device by Microsoft Flight Simulator. But that's fine, as all the inputs here are basically keyboard emulated, they're keyboard functions. The dials work as MIDI functions. But you'll only need to worry about all of that if you want to personally customize the functions yourself if you just want to rely on the plugin, then you really won't need to worry about any of that at all, but I will show a brief software overview further into the video, as well as link you to a fantastic guide on the more advanced functions. Now, straight away in Sim, you can see the Loop Deck has an overview panel, giving us our altitude, our heading, speed, vertical speed, as well as our RPM. You can see the RPM increasing right now as I increase the throttle on my HOTUS, and as I decrease the throttle, the RPM will start to go back down again. Now, alternatively, if you really want, you can use the throttle dial on the loop deck itself. And this, I prefer, I prefer to do this. I quite like to do very, very easy and has a lot of fine control. You can see uh, just how fine the control is there. We can increase that by 1% each time. And looking down at the cockpit, we can see that the dial does in fact control the uh, Cessna 172's throttle. Look at that. Now there's a bunch of other functions here, and we'll have a very quick look at each of them, or some of them, before we get up into the air. So looking over on the top right of the Loop Deck panel, we've got a dial for flaps. Unsurprisingly, this controls the flaps. We just moved the dial here, we've got three options here, we've got three settings rather, because this is the Cessna 172. And there we go, we can go all the way to fully flaps, and all the way back to uh, no flaps. You'll also notice that the Loop Deck functionality is completely usable when outside in the drone camera or any of the external views. So uh, yeah, you might find this to be very useful, especially if, like me, you rely on a lot of external shots. Here we're using the uh, mixture dial. Again, we've got a lot of very fine control over this. Works very straightforward there. We can also enable and disable brakes. Very easy. And let's just move the camera there a little bit. And you can see, yes, that actually it does the job. It works very easy, a very light touch here on these buttons. And again, these buttons are touch sensitive. Now here I've moved into the autopilot folder, the autopilot cert panel, and we can see each of these buttons affecting the Garmin G1000. And just so you know, because the Garmin G1000 doesn't have any input control options on the control menu within the sim, you can't directly map the Loop Deck dials to the Garmin dials, unfortunately. Now, here we are then at Redcar Airfield in England. This is in North Yorkshire, very near to where I live actually, and we're going to get up into the air. So we've set flaps to one because this is a relatively short field here, and we've got some trees right at the end, and we want to make sure we clear it. Re full throttle, and we've released the brakes. We're about to get up into the air. We're then going to turn to a somewhat southerly head in and then fly into the initial parts, the early parts of the North Yorkshire Moors. So we're up, we've just about cleared the trees there. Uh, interestingly, if you were to take off from the uh, airfield in the opposite direction, 
there is a pylon placed right at the end of the airfield in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So extremely dangerous, we're not going to either land or take off in that particular direction. Right, we're now heading away from Red Car. We got Teesport off to the uh, north, but we're heading uh, towards the uh, North Yorkshire Moors. We can see uh, the uh, small uh, little, well, I like to call it a mountain. Of course, it's nothing like a mountain, but it's a bit of a peak above the uh, left-hand side of the deck there. That peak is called Rosebury Topping, and it's a really nice climb, actually, a lovely track. Now, you'll have noticed that I've adjusted the throttle down a bit. We want to try and maintain our current altitude. I'm messed in with the elevation trim here, trying to find the perfect adjustment. Again, we've got a lot of fine control there. And this, for me, is one of the primary advantages between the Loop Deck and the Elgato Stream Deck. The Stream Deck, of course, doesn't come with dials, whilst the Loop Deck has got very functional ones. And these are extremely useful in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. The dials can also be depressed and used as buttons. Now, at this point, I want to lock in our current heading and use the autopilot to keep us there. So we can simply touch the heading option there on the left, and you can see that's set in our current heading. We then can enable the autopilot and select uh, heading. And yes, I did accidentally select altitude there. We need to disable that. And here we go with heading. So now the autopilot will keep us on the current heading that's locked in. And here's a lovely shot of us flying over the gorgeous town of Gisborough. Now jumping back into the plane, we're going to have a look at some other autopilot functionality. We're going to adjust our altitude here. We're currently at 1,500 feet and we want to adjust that up to 1,800 feet. So to do that, we're going to increase our vertical speed to just 200 feet per minute. That's a slight increase there, nothing too fast. And we've enabled the autopilot vertical speed. And here we are a few moments later, just approaching the desired altitude. So the desired altitude is in brackets. You can see that right here, I've just highlighted that on the screen and we've just approached that actual altitude. So I'm going to set the throttle down a little bit here. We're not going to go uh, too fast. We just want a nice uh, casual speed here and we're good to go. Now you find the loop deck is useful, especially if you're using it like I am here, a Hotus. I'm using the T-Flight Airbus Hotus. Outside, we can see we're just flying over Hutton Village. The peak just above the plane and slightly to the towel is again a Rosebury Top Inn. And down on the bottom right of the screen, just coming to view now, we can see a little trout just rising up to a top of a view, a cliff. There it is. That is called a high cliff. At an altitude of around about 1,100 feet, it commands an absolutely fantastic view, not just of Gisborough and all of Teesport there, but also much of the Yorkshire Moors as well. And for those of you interested, here is some real world footage of High Cliff, which offers another fantastic walk on the edges of the North York Moors. Seven, seven, Meanwhile, seven, back inside the plane, we can see we are still on our heading Manchester of uh, 132, but we're going to change that and head slightly more towards the uh, south. We're a little bit towards southeast here. There's a few nice valleys here that I wanted to fly over. So yes, we can do that simply by using the dial to adjust the heading. So we're now on a heading of 154. We're approaching some hills here and starting to feel a little bit on the low side. So we're going to increase the altitude a little bit up to around about 2000 feet. Again, we're going to use the autopilot to get us to that altitude. So we're going to adjust the VS speed there. And yes, Obsidian, you do need to use the uh, buttons here in the correct order. So we've adjusted VS speed to uh, 200. And we're going to increase the throttle so we can make that climb nice and safely, nice and easily. Fairly gentle climb. Now over to the right of the screen, you can see a valley. This is the valley I wanted to fly over. So we're going to change the heading again. And we're going to try and lock in around about 170 or maybe even 180. I think that should just about get us over the top of that valley. Looking good. Now, as you'll know from my previous videos, I'm very much into a general aviation. Those are pretty much the planes I fly. The Loop Deck, of course, can be used with airliners. It even has a separate airliner folder. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. But I haven't actually experimented with it or used it in the airliners myself. I tend to fly general aviation. So that's a very brief overview of a short flight there. We're going to quickly head into the Loop Deck software now and have a look at this. And you can see how it's customizable. Down on the bottom, we can see the Loop Deck itself. At the top of the screen, we can see the Loop Deck software. As we make changes in software, 
this is reflected on the loop deck panel itself. So we're going to change, pull out the uh, nav heading or the nav button and switch that out for WP. We can unassign that again and reassign any option we want. So in the Microsoft Flight Simulator panel on the right, you can see a huge range of different options here. Any of these can be added to the buttons on the screen. We can also do the same thing with dials. We may want a different option on one of the dials there, so that's very easy to change. There we go, we can just unassign that and put that back to flaps, or indeed to have any other uh, control in there we so desire. Another look at the hardware itself here. So these buttons, as I said, are touch sensitive. We've also got numerous individual pages. So in a minute, you'll see me swipe to the right and swipe to the left. And this will move us across various pages. Each of these can have additional options on them. Now, the Loot Deck Live itself is available directly from Loot Deck for €269, Euros, but you might be able to find it a bit cheaper if you shop around. That said, I do find it to be a bit on the expensive side, and there's no getting away from that. But do keep in mind it can be used with other games, such as Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, and pretty much anything else. And whilst it doesn't have preset plugins for those, you can easily create your own profiles for the games. Not to mention, you can purchase additional icon packs for those particular games. And you can see some examples on the screen right here. Keep in mind, you can also use this for streaming and as well as productivity software such as the Adobe Suites, and it also has a lot of functionality for Windows. On the unboxing, I did miss out the little stand here. This clips into the underside of the loot deck and does support it. You can see here, it stands very nicely. Of course, throughout the video, you'll have noticed I used a slightly different stand, but that was entirely for the purposes of filming. Meanwhile, one minor bugbear I had is that the protective cellophane left a bit of residue, sticky residue, when it was removed. This can be cleared off very easily, but it would be nice not to have had to do that at all. Overall then, the Loop Deck Live is a fantastic piece of kit. It makes flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator quite a breeze and really does help with additional functionality, including the different displays we have here as well. These I found to be extremely useful, especially with my reliance on using external cameras. It's definitely a piece of hardware that I'm going to be using all the time now when flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator, no doubt about that. And for those of you who'd like a bit more information or a very detailed guide on setup as well as some advanced features, then I can highly recommend a video by Simhanger Flight Simulation. You can see that linked in the video description. A very great video, I highly recommend it. Meanwhile, for everything else you need to know on the Loop Deck, do check out the links below. That then brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.